It's Thursday, October 24th, and it's time for another episode of SJHL Insider. I'm your host, Clark Monroe. Welcome back to the IKS Media Studios. We have a great show for you today. Lots of action across the league and some news to catch up on. Uh, and we'll be bringing in our co-host, Jamie Neugebauer, in just a second here. Uh, today on the show, we're going to recap the last couple of days in the SJHL. Plus, Jamie's going to give us his potential early dream roster for the Western All-Star Showcase in Warman coming up in just a couple of weeks. And we're going to be joined by head coach and general manager of the first place. Melfort Mustangs, Trevor Blevins, who has uh, helped push his defending champion team to back into first place, uh, the top spot in the league and top spot in a lot of categories too across the st uh, stats board and everything else. So uh, they're doing something right there in the last couple of years and uh, we want to check in with Trevor to see what he's doing. Uh, what's, what's in the water there in Melfort? Uh, but first, we got to thank our sponsors. Of course, we start with Cantera Seeds, Borgo, Capital Auto Mall, SGEU, SG, sorry, Sask Lotteries, UPL, which sponsors all of our broadcasts, including SJHL Insider. Chevrolet, our official vehicle sponsor of the SJHL and highlight sponsor. Great Western, Nutrient, RBC, and Saskatchewan Construction Safety Association, who we'll be, we will be hearing from uh, in our coach's interview later in the show. And uh, we'll bring in Jamie Neugebauer now, voice of the Notre Dame Hounds, co-director of media here with the SJHL at IKS. Jamie, it's been an interesting couple of weeks, first of all. I got to thank you for filling in for me last last episode. Uh, you and uh, Rory did the show last episode. It was awesome. It was uh, great. I missed out on Marty, and I felt super bad about it. Marty Martinson was the guest of the show uh, last episode, and uh, I was not here for that. So I'm going to regret that for the rest of the season. But uh, thanks for filling in for me. It's been an interesting couple of weeks. Yeah, it was always, as always, it's great to have Marty. It's always yeah. great to talk to Marty. Uh, and just like Rory said on the SJHL Weekly Show that we did, on Monday, uh, we're very happy to have you back, not just because we like you, uh -huh. uh, but also because hosting is not as easy as it looks. Yeah. And Jeremy Corrigan certainly made it easy, look easy, part of me, and you also make it look easy. Uh, and so we appreciate you guys uh, for doing that. And But otherwise, yeah, obviously, as I said also on the show, Rory and I have uh, a lot of experience working together. So yeah. it's not too difficult for us to work together. But as, uh, as I'll repeat it one more time. We're happy you're back. Well, so I, wasn't, back. I wasn't worried. Uh, yeah. I know that. But I do yeah. like to let you guys just be the stars, let you guys be the insiders. I'll do all the fill-in stuff. I, I don't mind that Not as that easy as it looks, folks. Uh, speaking of uh, all the stuff the hosts do... It's time for the Prairie Proud Hat Trick. Again, sponsored by our new sponsor, Prairie Proud. Shout out to everybody there, including my boy Cole Thorpe, who's doing a great job. And we have some stuff coming from Prairie Proud. If you're watching on YouTube, mm. uh, we will be, I think, dorn adorning some Prairie Proud gear in the mm. next little while. So I can't wait for that. Uh, and there might be some hats on the desk. We'll see. We'll see what happens. But... Uh, Love those guys, new spot, new partners of the SJHL, and uh, can't wait to uh, get them more involved. Uh, topic number one uh, is a recap of the last few days. There have been games in the last three days, including a Monday game, which was a fantastic noon game, including some school day kids coming out. So Kindersley snuck away with a 6-5 win in that one over the Notre Dame Hounds. Then on Tuesday, Yorkton got a 50-save performance from Callum Craig in a 3-0 shutout win over Flin Flon. Humboldt got a 4-3 overtime win at home against the Weyburn Red Wings, who were red hot. They won seven in a row before that. And Melfort got a 4-0 shutout win over the Battle for its North Stars. And then on Wednesday, Yorkton snuck away with a 6-5 comeback victory at the Mel Hegland over LaRange. So let's dive into these a little bit. We'll go back to Monday. Uh, it was a 6-5 win for Kindersley over Notre Dame. Despite getting out to a 5-3 lead early in the third period, Will Christian scored, followed by Alex Mack completing a hat trick for the night with two goals after that as the Kindersley Clippers snuck away with a 6-5 win in regulation. Caden Perron made 44 saves. Uh, while workhorse uh, goaltender Brett O'Halloran responded with 38 on the other end. Nugsy, you weren't at that game because you were doing SJHL in, uh, Weekly. It was mm -hmm. the live show. We were on the air. Uh, but, I mean, what can you tell me about Monday's game? Yeah, you know, back and forth, wild game. Got a quick message from the assistant GM of the Clippers after the game, Ryan Gibson, and he just said, you know, what a, what a hockey game. I'm not sure the Hounds, uh, you know, <sighs> Yeah, they, they, they felt great about how they played in the second period. Uh, they scored four straight goals, uh, and I was speaking to Ripley Garden a little bit about it, and he said, man, if we could just bottle how we felt on the bench in the second period and, and just bring that bottle out whenever uh, we play, then uh, we'd be very happy and we'd play very well because the Hounds did play very well and dominated the Clippers in the second and even perched to start the third and got a, a goal from Marco Georgievich to make it 5-3, but... 
again, you know, they get a little bit puffed up and the Clippers, you know, they play well. It was a rocking atmosphere at the Inner Pipeline Arena and uh, the Clippers, you know, I think Clayton Jardine has been preaching, hey, play the right way, doesn't matter the score, play the right way, doesn't matter the score. And um, they have some pieces, they've got a lot of experience and they have, you know, a real dynamo in Jackson Herchak on the back end and um, you know, again, the Clippers just kept with the program and, and found a way to win another hockey game. And that's kind of, again, the way the Clippers play, maybe a little bit more structured, but it's it's somewhat like last year, too, in that uh, they are able to dig deep and find a way to win some some not always pretty hockey games. And, and that's what they did. Yeah, a 6-5 game is never a coach's dream. But no. for a school day, noon, o'clo- noon o'clock. What do you expect? That's yeah. not what you say. But for a school day, mid-afternoon game, early afternoon game, uh, the kids must have absolutely loved it, and it sounded like that rink was. Kyle Adamson even commented in uh, governor for the governor for the Clippers. Kyle uh, Adamson, yes, yes. Bor- he's elite. the governor. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Um, he uh, chimed in during SHL Weekly and said that place was like blowing up with uh, mm, excitement. So it was good. must have been a great experience uh, for the kids. But again, the coaches never love a six-five game. No. Uh, fans do, but the coaches it, never do. I should say it was the second game. The the Hounds and Clippers had played at four right. p.m. the day before, and then noon that day so it was kind of uh, i mean you never know i guess but it was it was probably going to be a, this type of a sloppy sure. and then you never know what's going to happen type of game and caden Perron made his debut yeah 44 saves but when the, when the push comes to shove bredo halloran made the saves the hounds had a six on four power play there at the end they pulled the goal he got a power play with a minute and 13 seconds left to try to tie it and couldn't figure it out so um they had their chances the hounds did but they let another one slip yeah, let's move on to Tuesday now. Uh, a couple of shutouts on Tuesday. We'll start with Yorkton's 3 nothing win over Flynn Flon at the Whitney Forum. A 50-save shutout from reigning rookie of the week, Callum Craig, combined with goals from Riley Cormier, Tyler Palin, and Vinay Junek, led the Terriers to a 3 nothing win at the Whitney Forum. And Nugsy, don't look now. The Flynn Flon Bombers have lost four games in a row. Mm-hmm. Is it panic time in Flynn Flon? Well, I actually I asked, hate asking that question. Yeah, I asked Rob Hart uh, about the, basically this question. Yeah, I didn't use the word panic, uh, but I asked Rob Panic's Hart, the, the great broadcaster of the Flint Flon Bombers, that question this morning, essentially, and he said there's some shock. I guess is the answer sure. up in Flint Flon, just in terms of the fact that they're just not used to struggling, uh, you know, at all out of the gate. But that being said. I st- and I've said it in weekly, Clark. I've said it many times. I don't think the Bombers are playing bad hockey. They just can't put the puck in the net. Which is not uh, a problem we thought they'd have this year. <laughs> no, well, no. I mean, not when you have Carter Anderson. I mean, yeah. you just kind of expect that he could put up 60 in his sleep kind yeah. of thing in the SJ. But, uh, you know, they've lost four of their last five games, have the Bombers. But I looked up the stats. Over those last five games, they have out high scoring chance their opposition, 74 55. Wow. So they should be putting more pucks in the net based on the way that they're playing, where they get on the ice, uh, blue paint chances, that kind of thing. On the flip side, the Yorkton Terriers could have responded negatively to all the things that have happened right. you know, with the forfeits, et cetera. But such impressive leadership for them to go up to the Whitney Forum. Their shot percentage of shots that have gone in the net especially the last little while, is extremely impressive and probably not sustainable, but nine goals on 59 shots against Flynn Flon and LaRange in those ranks for Yorkton. So 15% of Yorkton's shots went in the back of the net, which is crazy. So, hey, big-time kudos to Yorkton. Again, I've been saying it. Don't panic, Flynn Flon. You'll figure it out. You're not playing bad hockey. Yeah, well, uh, I agree. And, you know, Flynn Flon's got the pieces. I think they'll be okay. It's just one of those things where once they start rolling, I feel like they're not going to stop, and they just haven't yeah. started rolling yet. And Michael keep looking to make, make yeah. moves, and he said it from the beginning. Like, you know, you, you it's not a right to wear this bomber jersey. You don't become Superman when you pull it on. Um, and if you aren't, you know, putting in the work, if you're not doing the things that bombers have as their standards – then you're not going to last here. And he said that, and you know what? Like, if these are wake-up calls to Flynn Flon, then right. I'm sure Mike is fine with that. So that's just the way it is. Yeah, early-season wake-up calls are better than late-season wake-up calls, yeah. that's for sure. Um, and you know what? We we can't forget that they did lose a ton of production from last year, and yeah. maybe guys are still just finding their role. So I'm, I'm mm-hmm. fine giving Flynn Flon a little and, longer. And the injury to, to Keith Gruner yep. hasn't helped, and injury yeah, he was issues. On he with was hot, too, when he got really hurt. Really hot. So. Team Nukes-Dradamus. Yeah. And Carter Anderson, as well, uh, has not been you know 100 yeah. percent really ever this year so again not the end of the world not used to losing not used to getting shut out not used to losing streaks 
three games, three losses in a row at the Whitney Forum. Mean, you, yeah. you don't really see that. So, but hey, yeah, we'll have to get Rory yeah, on the research it's team part to of uh, check yeah. out what the it, last time that's happened. Three <laughs> yeah. in a row at the at the Whitney. Yeah, yeah. But fifty shots. We were talking about this, oh, Clark. Yeah. So you can give me what you think. Mm-hmm. Fifty shots. Like I asked Benny Walchuk, the Yorkton Terriers broadcaster for the game. It, is 50 shots like legitimately 50 shots or a little bit of was he cooking. in the building for that he one? was there yeah he was, he there. was on the road with the terriers yeah and he said yeah probably like probably closer to like 35 40 in mm-hmm. reality but it doesn't really help a home team if the home teams it's a volunteer so i'm not hammering anybody too hard but it's no just, but it's it has been going on for a while you see i, I don't want to call anybody out either no. but you see some shot numbers for like flim flons shot numbers maybe yeah they f- sometimes it feels like there's a lot on there every single night. <laughs> and it's like, okay. I mean, they always have, they've had high powered offenses for years now. Mm-hmm. So it's not overly surprising, but the number is usually very high. And yeah. the argument is f- for me, at least it's like that just inflates the opposing goalies save percentage numbers right. is, I don't know if there's a, some, some sort of mentality where like, Hey, it looks like we're dominating. So I'm going to add, you know, or there was a couple extra shots here. I don't know. I don't know. We don't have to get into it too deep. There's no, no conspiracy theory going no. on here. Just something interesting. Yeah, you, you, and, seem, and you tend to notice if you look at the score sheets from the Whitney forum in the last couple of years and we're going to get, we're going to get blown up for this. I'm uh, sure. But it's not just them. Like it's, it's across the league. I don't understand like why, like, you know, you see it where it takes one or two or three shots, for one team to get recorded a shot, the other team it's, you know, boop, boop, boop. Like, I'd say you have to be a pretty mentally weak team to look up at the shot clock and get all sorts of, all sort of, you Breaking know, rights or something. surprised or, or shocked or struggling because you're being outshot a little bit. Like, late kids, kids or players know when they're playing yeah. on the ice if they're being dominated or not. So I don't get it. I don't get it. Anyways, just, that, just, just a shot is a shot. Let's yeah, just that's, a shot that's a today's shot. episode of yeah. Insiders, Rants and Raves. Yeah. Uh. Grinding <laughs> my gears like in Family Guy. Um, yeah. I do want to make one more point yeah. maybe before we move on. Uh, Vinay, Unex, third goal there at the Whitney Forum, the game between uh, uh, Yorkton and Flynn Fawn. If you're not aware, with the new rules this year, you are allowed to kick a puck in the net from mm. outside the crease. Rob Hart on the air, and he's been made aware. He knows, and he's like, all right, cool. Um, if you kick a puck from outside the crease, it is a good goal. And that's what happened with Vinay Junek, and it's happened before in other parts of the league. Too, yeah, I mean, so. that happened kind of earlier this season when we were in Melville uh, with Notre Dame. There was yeah, a goal scored Ian that Bjors, game. Yeah. yeah, that's right. Um, Humboldt beat Weyburn 4-3 to in overtime. It's Weyburn's first, I'll say, loss in eight games. Uh, they still are undefeated in regulation in eight games. However... Uh, they do keep that, uh, you know, that hot streak kind of going. Uh, they had a nice little game. It was a great game in Humboldt, four three mm-hmm. overtime win. A beautiful overtime winner by Oakley McIlwain could mm-hmm. be a could be the play of the week candidate. Uh, notch the victory for the Broncos against the red hot Weyburn Red Wings again, who are now seven zero and one in their last eight games. The Broncos were backstopped by a thirty eight save performance from Brady Holtvoet, uh, while Angelo Zoll made forty three saves for Weyburn. Humboldt is now seven three and one on the season uh, mm-hmm. with the victory. Can maybe talk about that one for a little bit here. Well, first of all, Brady Holt vote, 2007 birth year from yeah. Humboldt, goes up to Prince George. That's a very good team in the Western Hockey League. Um, you know, sent down to his hometown team, which is a great situation for him. And it took till 1042 of the second period of his second game for him to give up a goal. Like, you remember he shut out LaRange and then till 10, 1042 against the very, very high-powered Weyburn Red Wings attack we talked about mm. uh, ad, ad nauseum to, to give up a goal. And neither of the two goals really there that he gave up were his fault. You know, Bray Lagranger with a uh, sort of half break, Jerome Maharaj with a very long breakaway, and then an absolute bullet by uh, Max Chakrabarty uh, is the other Weyburn goal. So, man, Brady Holt, what a start to your not small sample size, but impressive yeah. in net for, uh, for Humboldt. Uh, yeah, as you said, seven-game win streak is snapped. Still haven't lost in regulation in a while. And the Broncos have won three in a row. And only, and, you know, Rory was going on a little bit about the fact that he felt, and Braden Colmosco too, about the fact that the Broncos were playing sloppy. They were playing kind of riverboat, you know, shinny-type men's league hockey. And chances were going, you know, back and forth. And that's not what they want. They want their identity to be heavy and hard to play against. Well, since those, you know, that eight to six game against Battlefords and the five three home loss to Estevan, they've only given up two goals a game uh, over those three games. So, you know, I think again, adjustment made, ship maybe righted for Humboldt. 
Uh, again, Weyburn uh, knows, Cody Mapes knows that the Elgar Peterson Arena is a tough place to go into. Yeah. We talked to Jerome Maharaj about, you know, whether this was a revenge game or not from game seven, because that was the last time Weyburn was there. Uh, and they lost game seven on a couple five on three Humboldt goals, uh, really. But uh, hey, you know what? Weyburn right back in it again. Uh, came back, you know, from down to nothing in in the Elgar Peterson Arena. So there's lots of positives for Weyburn to take too. I'm sure you would agree. Oh yeah, yeah. Weyburn's. Uh, I don't think they're they're hanging their heads necessarily. Nope. I know uh, obviously you don't want to lose in overtime, but nope. I mean they're 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 hot right now, and I think yeah. they're going to do a lot of good things going forward here as well. Uh, moving on now to the third game on Wednesday, uh, the Melford Mustangs, who we're going to be talking uh, with their head coach and general manager, Trevor Blevins, uh, in a, just a few moments here, uh, defeated the Battlefords North Stars, who are playing good in their own right. Four different goal scorers and a 32 save shutout from Team Moneymen goaltender Christian Coombs. <laughs> just wanted to give that out there. That's my fantasy hockey team here in the SJ. Uh, they, helped, they helped the Melford Mustangs maintain first place in the league with a 4 nothing win over Battlefords, again, who has been playing pretty well. Uh, Nugsy, the Melford Mustangs, they just keep doing everything right. What's going on? Yeah, structure and heavy and, yeah. you know, just smart. You know, they their pucks are, uh, are along the walls and pucks are in the corner and they're winning those those battles. You know, calling Battlefords in Notre Dame, I felt Battlefords won every battle. And then watching a little bit of this pun game, intended? it felt like, uh, yeah, yeah. Gave, uh, no pun intended, but you could <laughs> grab there. Um, it felt like it was a reverse. Like it felt like Melford won every one of those, right. you know, 50-50 battles. I always think about, you know, sometimes hockey can be boiled down so simply and analyzed so simply. If you throw a puck into a scrum, in the corner and there's two guys on one team two guys on the other team the team that comes up with that puck more often than not that team is probably going to win the hockey game like it's that simple it's kind of like the offensive defensive line mentality right in football and the Melford Mustangs you know their offensive line their defensive line whatever you want to say uh, they just win they win pucks they dig it out and they make your life no fun whatsoever uh, constantly now I'm going to ask you and obviously a big piece of that is the goaltending right uh, Christian Coombs and Madden Malaka have both been magnificent. We've talked about Weyburn's one-two punch maybe being the best in the league with Zoll and Daza. Which do you think is a better one-two punch right now, Melford or Weyburn? Well, I mean, I got to go with Melford. And the reason I say this, uh, no, no slouches over there in Weyburn. I, but with their current situation being what it is, mm -hmm. it's almost like if Daza's not starting, they have to take him off the roster because there's too many 20-year-olds in Weyburn right mm -hmm. now. So in a way, until that gets kind of sorted out and you actually have Daza and Angelo on the roster every single night, uh, if that's going to be what happens there, then I got to give it to Melfort. Now, I, uh, it kind of reminds me of last year's situation in Flin Flon with mm -hmm. Harmon, Laser Hume, and, and uh, Marquardt uh, in the sense that uh, they're both top four in the league pretty much in every every category. Right now, for goals against, at least, they're both top four in the league, I think, and top four, top five, at least, mm -hmm. if I uh, checked before right, the show. Yeah. Um, but uh, Christian Coombs has a 176 goals against right now. Uh, yeah. Now, that's goals against is always there's more team-based, you know, mentality to the goals against than maybe save percentage. But, I mean, yeah. his save percentage is like 940. So <laughs> Yeah, yeah. If, uh, I, if I were a top goalie, I personally want a higher goals against, a better goal against, rather. That's just fair. That means you're winning. That means your team's winning. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. Maybe you look at it that way. And when you look at Madden Malaka, he's got a 905 save percentage, but he's got a 221 goals against mm -hmm. for a rookie goaltender. So mm -hmm. uh, they're doing great things in Melfort. And maybe, like you said, the team structure, the way that they're playing, uh, they're hard to play against. Their defensive uh, structure is maybe just a little bit more implemented than some other teams right now. Yeah. But at the same time, uh, when you're getting, you know, on average, a two goals against from your goalies every single night, well, good chance. Yeah, great chance. Literally, like, yeah. like I did the numbers, uh, and it is a dead heat in a lot of ways between Melfort and Weyburn. Yeah. And obviously you talk about uh, Weyburn's, you know, early, early start to the year, which actually feels like a long time ago, <laughs> um, mm -hmm. given that they hadn't lost until then. Uh, but the between, you know, you take the two goalies on each side, Melfort and Weyburn, and then average their goals against and their save percentage, Melfort is right at two, yeah. which is perfect, and a 924 save percentage. Very good. Weyburn's at 263 goals against. And we talked about Daz had a few struggles to start this struggle starts, um, but their save percentage is all and Mitchell is nine twenty six, so yeah. actually a little bit higher than Melford's. So technically, it's nine twenty five and a half, but right. you rounded that up. Yeah, I'm guessing yeah, something like that. But <laughs> to be honest, the bottom line is it's immaterial. They're both terrific, though, as yeah. you said, very, very rightly, and it's a great point. Um, 
Melfort's got an 05 and 06 goal yeah. doing this job. Which you have to take into account when yeah. you're doing this. You take about, you debate. know, that doesn't count towards their 20 year old at all. So mm. um, it's a, but it's a good situation for them both to have because a lot of teams are desperate for good goaltending. Yeah. I mean, I mean, Cody Mapes has said it twice now on our broadcast, but uh, he yeah. thinks that Daza or Angelo Zoll could both be goalies of the year. Yeah. And I think that still holds true to this day. Um, but and so, like I said, we're talking we're not saying in this debate no. that Melfort's one and Weyburn is 12. We're saying they're like one, two and neck yeah, and neck. So something like that, nothing yeah. wrong with Weyburn's goaltending. I'm just saying right now, I yeah, mean, yeah. You, it's hard not to give it to the Melfort at the moment. Yeah. Uh, let's move on to Wednesday so we can get this going here. Uh what a game this one was. It was uh, a 4-1 lead in the second period, Laurent Chad, uh, against the Yorkton Terriers. Dustin Renus and William Leonard both had four points, while 20-year-old goaltender Ethan Farrell made 24 saves and outdueled Logan Falk, who made 32 saves uh, for the Ice Wolves, as the Yorkton Terriers, again, down 4-1 in the second period, completed the comeback and had a 6-5 win at the Mel Hagelin Uniplex. Nugsy, we, said, we talked about it during the show. I think your quote was, Crazy things like this happen all the time at the Mel Hagelin. Yeah. Uh, so it's not surprising, but a 6-5 win, again, the coaches don't love it, but I'm sure the fans yeah. loved it outside of the fact that the Ice Wolves went home with a loss. Yeah, the, the crazy is what's expected at yeah. uh, the Mel Hagelin Uniplex. Yeah. You know, Kevin Kaminsky, I'm sure, and, and the Ice Wolves, this one does not feel good. 4-1 no. at home. Um, you, you, you should be closing that out, but... Again, first of all, we, we talked a lot about Yorkton and their firepower. They're actually dealing with some injuries. And uh, not only that, but they're dealing with the fact that they played at the Whitney Forum the night before, mm -hmm. dealing with the fact that they have this, uh, again, the specter of the forfeits and the fact that they've dropped down the standings and whatnot. Um, you know, all these things that they can't control, and, and they went up and they, they found a way to, to rally back. And, again, chances happen fast. Uh, Rory's talked a lot about it, so I give him credit for the point that the uh, the Yorkton Terriers love a counterattack. Mm -hmm. uh, they are very very good when you make a mistake and, and transition, and you're a bit loose with a pass, and then they're they're on your throats in in a second. And and what rink in the SJHL uh, does that cater to more than the Melagli right. Uniplex? So you know, for for Yorkton to score six, uh, you know, it doesn't really shock you, um, but. Uh, again, I'm sure Kevin Kaminsky is not too too thrilled. Uh, you know, Kyle Schneider's away with Team Saskatchewan at mm -hmm. the WHL Cup, so we'll have an update on that too. Less help, we'll update that. But uh, you know, again, uh, you know, it makes another interesting situation. And I'm not trying to tr cause controversy because you know I think both goalies in Yorkton are very very good. Uh, and again, I don't necessarily I don't think Ethan Farrow was too much to blame for the goals that he gave up on the night. But it's, it is not an easy situation for an Ethan Farrow in that situation. You know, he gives up five after the kid puts up 50 saves mm -hmm. in a shutout at the Whitney. So that's an interesting thing to keep an eye on. I'm not saying it's a controversy. Yeah. It's just something to keep an eye on. I'm not stirring the pot. Don't yell at me, Yorkton fans. I'm just pointing it out because that's my job. At uh, Nugzi, yeah. eight, what is it, 87 on Twitter? Uh, if that's if you find at Nugzi 87, then it won't go to me, and that sounds perfect. Um, so <laughs> we'll leave it at that. You can find my Twitter, I'm sure. I'd love to hear from you. I think both Farrow and Krieg, Krieg are terrific. I'm not saying that. Oh, I'm just, just saying. Just I'm just saying it's an interesting situation, and yeah. uh, and, and that's fine. But uh, yeah, kudos to Yorkton. Um, they technically haven't lost in a while. Yeah. Though literally they have lost because of the forfeits. Because but, of the forfeits. But kudos to those leaders and kudos to that team for for not using anything as an excuse. Yeah. Let's um, now that the recap's done. I was going to do this later, but let's do it now. Let's bring up the standings uh, and just check out kind of where the league sits right now. As we can see, the Melford Mustangs do sit at the top with 18 points. Melville right behind them with 17. Uh, Kindersley with 16, uh, and then Weyburn and Humboldt tied with 15 at the moment. And this is why we said, hey, Yorkton fans, yes, this sucks that you mm -hmm. lost six points in the standings, but look at them. They're already in sixth. They were in ninth. They're already in sixth. A uh, yeah. couple of wins this week. You're already back up there. Uh, so I had a feeling they were going to be fine. They have 14 points. Battlefords has 13 right now. Flin Flon after four straight losses at 11. They're tied with LaRange right now, who's technically sitting outside with 11. Uh, and Estevan with 10. Nipuin uh, with five. And Notre Dame with four. So that's where the standings are at right now. Uh, just a quick thoughts on the standings before we move on, Newsy. Yeah, I mean, uh, obviously... Nippowin, Melville, and Estevan are the happiest people right now because yeah. they all got free wins. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> so that's why Nippowin, like when I had a Notre Dame, is because the Nippowin lost against Yorkton, but they won yeah. because of the. So that, that's all. I, it'll keep changing. It'll be wacky, and that's what makes our job fun. Yeah, and reminder: uh, there is an appeal. 
going on. I don't know what the status of that is. Yeah. I don't think we've been alerted of the status, but that could also change some things too. I don't know how yeah. that's all going to work I don't out. Think so. so stay tuned to sjhl.ca for more information because uh, we'll keep you updated. Uh, and you know what? We'll probably know by Monday, I would assume. I, I don't think the appeal process would take that long. So I'm going to assume by Monday on SJHL Weekly, we'll probably have an yeah. update, or maybe there will be no update, and we'll just say that. Mm -hmm. We'll let you know. Stay tuned. Uh, topic number two here, Nugsy, I'm going to let you take over for a little bit because uh, sure. we're going to go for a little bit of fun here. Nugsy has put together a projected roster that he thinks could be the squad that we see for the SJHL at the Warman World Junior A Showcase in a couple of weeks. Now, reminder, uh, you can only have five 05s, mm -hmm. five 19-year-old players. Everyone else has to be younger than that. On Team Canada West. On Team Canada Not West. On this team, you could... It would be dumb if they picked all O fives, but right? They could, but I think you've to. kind of structured your roster. I've with tried that in to mind, right? stay away from O fives yeah. for some of the most part. Yeah. So let's look at it now, New Zealand. Yeah. Take over. Well, sure. I mean, okay. I'm gonna like. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna push back on you a second there. First of all, Clark, and okay. say this is not my what I think necessarily will be the roster. I'm not pre predicting. This is the roster, as you could see, as the graphics man there cheekily put, if Nugsy were God, this would be my roster. Right. So if this is who I would pick if it was up to me, it is not up to me. There are a lot of, a lot of factors involved. You know, one thing that I was mentioning to, uh, you know, potentially a coach that might be involved is that, you know, it's hard to find natural centermen in this group, blah, blah, blah. So there you have it. But anyways, I go through this group. Um, and, you know, I, first of all, I think Kent Moore's uh, there at the top is, is one of the elite players in this league that uh, has not uh, maybe had the recognition and, and maybe even the production that, that you know, he, he is capable of. And, you know, so he's a guy that I think should get a look. And, um, you know, you have the, those humble guys, Jacob Streets. He, again, I talked about trying to limit 05s, but it's hard to keep certain 05s off uh, the situation here. I just think uh, guys like, you know, Jaden uh, E. Ogan, uh, is he the most dominant? to 05 in terms of putting numbers up I don't know he's certainly up there but he can skate he can kill penalties he can fly I think skating is something I definitely you know gave a lot of uh, thought to as well um, you know there's Ethan DK's little brother Luke DK yeah. there I think he's very very talented and, and I think he would have a lot of fun with those puck protectors you know Cohen Sampton Leo Seitz they're the Flynn Flon boys and then that fourth line if you call it that um, you know, those guys have a lot of experience. Jackson Lee only has a single uh, goal on the year there for Melville, but he can absolutely, absolutely fly. Uh, and I believe, uh, yeah, he, you know, he's a guy that you should keep your eye on when you watch Melville because he's one of the fastest, if not the fastest guys in the league. And on the blue line, again, I have a couple, uh, I have experienced guys with younger guys. So I like to mix that up. Teo Flory, uh, again, I think he's got a lot of potential. I know he's played a little bit of forward even this year for Melford, but... Again, I really like the pro the, the pro project in 07 like that. Obviously, Jackson Herchak, uh, you know, to me, if there was they were handing it Rookie of the Year right now, it would be him. Uh, and him with Oakley McIlwain just could be, you just throw that into a Team Canada West pairing. I think that would be phenomenal. Obviously, Fierce and Lindorf and Vinny Palmery know each other already. And again, ready-made. Uh, and again, two terrific guys. I think Vinny's as physically dominating as any player in the league and can really skate in well. And Gavin Granger has been really, really impressive for Battlefords. And what more can you say about Red O'Halloran and Callum Krieg uh, in the net. So this is the team that I would pick. I think, you know, again, my, you know, the people that are involved with picking the roster will, will see things their way and from their experience. And I'm not saying that's going to be the roster. Uh, and, you know, don't get mad if I left your kid out or whatever. Um, you know, there were a lot of options, uh, you know, some, some other options that I could have gone with on goalie, you know, Benny Polhill uh, from Estevan, Massimo Urbani, uh, from Flynn Flon, obviously Christian Coombs and Angel Zoll, both 05s. I didn't really want an 05 goalie if I could help it, even though those guys are all phenomenal. Uh, defenseman Luke Lepper for Flynn Flon is wonderful. Um, Boston Harkness for Melville, Max Chakrabarty again. All the, these guys, the guys are 05s again, so that kind of went against them. Uh, if Lincoln Fisher was healthy in Battlefords, he would be on this team. There's no question in my mind. I really love Lincoln. He's having a great year. Same with Connor Frost and Weyburn. Uh, he's an 06, but would he be there if he was healthy? Don't know his health situation. And, and maybe Jag Taylor is another option from Estevan. And then up front, Connor Watson. I really like him and Nipawin. 
big boy can really fly. Um, you know, I'm sure some people will will notice that Nick Jean is one of the leading rookie point getters in the league, and he's a Notre Dame hound. So I get to watch him a lot, and I know him, and I like the kid a lot, and I'm thrilled he's on the hounds. Uh, I'd like to see a lot more from him uh, in the D zone. I'd like to see a lot more from him. Uh, you know, maybe, maybe, maybe just consistency of shifts and that kind of thing. Same with Ian Bjors. You know, both those guys are young and are putting up points because the Hounds really need them to, and they can, and not taking anything away from them. But, um, you know, if either of them were on the team, I wouldn't be surprised. You know, Jace Rask and Preston Bearwald are two young 07s in this league that people like. Uh, Wyatt Stinton, again, another Flynn Flon boy. A little Flynn Flon local even, which is nice to see, and he actually plays center. So I think that really will help Wyatt Stinton maybe, you know, crack the roster because he's an 07 and he's a centerman and he's very reliable in his own zone. And then, of course, the last one is uh, my last Golden Sheaf uh, article uh, subject, Rylan Williams, 05 birth year, could play anywhere on a lineup and contribute, having a great year for Battlefords. So, again, not didn't leave anybody out because I don't like them or I don't think they're good players, just... This is the team that I picked, and, and we'll see how, how right I am, but I'm not projecting per se because I know there's a lot of factors. Yeah, and uh, we'll know that, I think, early in like the the showcase itself is the 4th to the 6th yep. of November. Presented by Palliser, our Palliser. great partners at Palliser. Palliser Insurance. Uh, so we'll know the roster a few days before that, and we'll make sure we announce it and let everybody know. And yep. if there's uh, how many how many nukes he gets right, uh, yeah. we'll have to see. Keep track out there. Yeah. Um, topic number three, uh, there's some great stuff going on with SJHL alumni in the last couple of weeks, uh, more recently than that, just the last few days. Uh, plus, there's some other tidbits. So this is like a, a makeshift noogs and notes from noogs SJHL Weekly, notes. but we're not going to play the graphic. Oh. Sorry. Uh, but... Um, yeah, Nugsy, take it away. There's some alumni stuff and some other stuff. Yeah, well, let's before that, let's a couple trades. A couple trades. Um, there was one today, even that was announced. Uh, and but uh, you know, last weekend, Logan Goodwin, uh, who hadn't played this year too much, uh, you know, he moved from uh, Melville to Battlefords to strengthen that Battlefords decor. I mentioned that injury to Lincoln Fisher. Logan Goodwin and Lincoln Fisher are not that dissimilar. Obviously, Logan's uh, two years older. But uh, obviously, you know, he's got a lot of experience. Uh, and so Logan will be a nice fit on that Battle for the Decor, I think. And then uh, today, the Nippon Hawks bringing in Justice Cutler, 18-year-old, uh, big mobile defenseman uh, from Drayton Valley, you think, in, in that rink where, you know, you keep things simple and good things happen in Nippon. Uh, Justice will be a good a good uh, ad, and uh, they got to send some money and the CGHL rights to Reed McKay, who uh, has not played for the Hawks uh, a couple years, was uh, with the Wainwright Bisons in the in Junior B in Alberta, and also with the Lethbridge Hurricanes in the Western Hockey League. Uh, good player. So there you go, Drayton Valley maybe getting him as well as some cash for Justice Cutler. And remember, uh, you mentioned the SJHL on your next vehicle trade in at yes. Capital Auto Group. You receive an additional grand on your trade in value. So $1, there's thousand dollars, thousand dollars, pretty for good. free. For just nothing. say SJHL. You just say SJHL uh, on your trade in. On your trade in. Yeah. Yep. We have to uh, make sure. Terrific. We that. So there's the trades. Um, you know, so alumni report a little bit. Impossible. Yeah, what's up? Impossible, Clark, to mention all the alumni because that would be ridiculous. No, mention everybody. There's too many. Okay, whatever. <laughs> mention Donnie Hul Villeneuve scoring uh, his two goals there for yes. the Barracuda. Which is unreal in the for San Jose in the American Hockey League, uh, but not just him being involved. Uh, we mentioned it to, uh, off air, just uh, as we were about to go on air. James Venn uh, just committed to the Northern Michigan University. He's doing well uh, in the BCHL with Sherwood Park, of course, big part of Melfort's championship last year and run to the Centennial Cup final. Uh, and Northern Michigan talked about uh, Aiden Hutchinson scoring his first goal there, Ryan Dugay, Tynan Ewart, and Ryan Willette, who's also a goalie. So we could have both uh, SJ alumni goalies at Northern Michigan next year with uh, Ryan Willette and James Venn, who are both wonderful SJHL goalies. I uh, still have nightmares about Ryan Willette from 2018-19, but we'll leave that there. Uh, <laughs> he he stole, uh, stole is a strong word, but he almost pretty much stole the Survivor Series between Yorkton and Notre Dame in 2019. All right, moving on, Josh Cote uh, has been the named the uh, goaltender of the week in the CCHA as well for 
uh, University of Augustana. Uh, and not only did they win twice, did uh, his team, but they beat number 12 Omaha, Nebraska. And Cote gave up one goal in both those games. Not one goal in both games, one goal over the weekend. Uh, and obviously, Omaha, Nebraska ranked 12th in the USA. So that is very impressive for Josh Cote, though, again, us in the SJHL, not surprised because Josh is terrific. Ethan yeah, a bit Zilke, of a stud. Yeah, a bit of a stud. Ethan Zilke leads Lindenwood in scoring, and Kean Bell, the two-time MVP, can't win the MVP this year. And I was joking with Kean that maybe they should fudge his birth certificate so he can play for his uncle, Marty, in Battlefords. Uh, he thought that was a good idea, but it's not going to happen. He has a younger uh, brother, doesn't he? Can uh, he just like maybe say he's actually his younger brother? Uh, and could then be. Just fudge, maybe uh, maybe add that. a third L, Bell, yeah. uh, or something. No, of course he's uh, no three also. But four points in six games at Acadia uh, in U Sports, so good for him. And then the last one uh, before we uh, do something different is uh, Team Saskatchewan at the WHL Cup yesterday beat Alberta 5-2 to two in Alberta in Red Deer uh, at the uh, U16 level, uh, and they'll face British Columbia this afternoon. That game is probably done by the time you're listening to this. Uh, but uh, good for Team Saskatchewan. I mentioned five uh, SJHL draft picks, plus two guys who are auto-protects, plus Brett Pilkington, the head coach and GM of the Notre Dame Hounds, is the coach of that team. Uh, and former Kindersley assistant Mitch Topinka is the assistant in that team, and Kyle Schneider is the video coach, the LaRange Ice Wolves assistant coach. So lots of SJ connections and a big win for Saskatchewan yesterday. There you go. That's uh, alumni report and tidbits yeah. with Nugsy. Uh, it tidbits. doesn't ring as well as Nugs and Notes, but no. alumni report and tidbits. Uh, there you go. Uh, we are going to head out to the video chat now and be joined by our special guest for today, Trevor Blevins of the Melfort Mustangs. Of course, all of our coaches' interviews are brought to you by Saskatchewan Construction Safety Association. Trevor, welcome to the show. Uh, congrats on the last little stretch of hockey there for you guys. Hey, thanks for having me, guys. Uh, no, we're playing the right way. Things are going well, and uh, happy to be here. So 11 games into the season, the Mustangs have won nine of them, four in a row, top three power play, top two penalty kill, fewest goals ac uh, against across the league. After a summer of turnover uh, and transition from a championship season, how, how are you doing this, Trevor? Well, I think you got to give full credit to the players. And, you know, my assistant coach, Ty Sugar, does a great job with special teams. And, uh, you know, there's a lot of buy-in with the group that's here. Uh, return, not just returning guys, but the, the new, new, new faces that are in our dressing room have done an excellent job. We've had a couple wake-up calls here, though, like through, the, through our time, which has been healthy for us to see if we can respond and reset and, I tell you, the characters come through every night when we've had to do that, and uh, it's sure nice to have that in your repertoire, I guess, to, so to speak. Yeah, for sure. And talking about one returning guy and, and one new face, uh, we talked before the season in our season preview chat, Trevor, just about your goaltending situation. I brought up Christian Coombs, and I think your quote was loosely, you, you praised his work ethic, and you, you thought he had the ability to run with the job. And so far in eight starts, he has a 179 goals against, top three in most goaltenders' categories across the board. And Madden Malaka has been great as well coming in for a young guy for you. Um, does having a goalie, a goalie tandem like that, just allow your team to just play a lot more comfortable than otherwise maybe that would be the case? Uh, I, I have to agree with you. You got to have confidence in that position, uh, 100%. But in saying that it, they've just been unbelievable for us, uh, made some big timely saves in games where it could have gone either way. And it, and we've won a lot of tight games too, and it's not just because of them, but our team defense. I mean, we've played well in front for the most part, but they've got the job done when called upon. And uh, you know, with with Madden, we were very fortunate to get him from the Regina Pats, and a uh, little Tristan Fry connection there helped us. And then um, you know, with Christian coming in with the start he had at camp and through through the you know the process of going to start the regular season, he's been fantastic and. Uh, passed with full full colors and hopefully continues. Yeah, I'll always appreciate uh, Tristan Fry uh, shout out. Of course, former captain of the Melford Mustangs and uh, director of player personnel uh, there with the uh, or player development, I should say, with the Regina Pats and a terrific, terrific human being, just in general. Speaking of terrific human beings, uh, Trevor, uh, it certainly can't hurt to get Zach Summers back. I mean, just talk about, you know, what that kid, you know, has been through. Every time he's been in the lineup for you over his career, it seems like he's been incredible. 
but uh, just an incredible journey of, of perseverance and character for him to to find a way back into the lineup the last couple games after you know such a long time of dealing with an injury there. Well, JB, you captured the essence of that actually in that intro. It's fantastic. It is true though. He is a fantastic human being, and it is a true case of perseverance. He uh, just you know he got cleared over the summer here to to actually start playing, but we've, we've taken our time and, and Zach's bought into getting in game shape. So we don't want him unhealthy out there where he can hurt something else, not being ready to play as far as his physicality and his shape that way. So he went bought into really uh, putting in the extra time at the rink on the ice in the gym. And uh, we feel, and he feels that he's in the best shape he's been in his whole life. So, uh, he's played that way too. He, he looks great uh, in his first few games, and we couldn't be happier to have him. And uh, pretty emotional too, you know. And it's a guy like that that's you've been with for four years, and he, it's uh, it's fantastic to see him uh, do well on and off the ice. And uh, it's a pretty special player for me uh, and the Mustang organization. Yeah, of course. Anytime you can put your top line center and a D1 commit into the lineup, that's probably going to help. Uh, I'm not a coach, but that yeah, seems it, like an obvious. It, it, uh, <laughs> it helps. No question. <laughs> um, and speaking of helps uh, and, you know, we've kind of joked, like, do we put him as a defenseman of the year category guy, forward of the year? I don't know if you're right. tired of this question, but Danton Cox continues to play well, whatever position it seems like. You put him in, but it seems like he's regularly been a forward. It seemed like that was maybe the case, uh, you know, uh, for, for a lot of the Centennial Cup, especially. Uh, but uh, I guess what have you seen from Danton that you've kind of settled on forward for him? Well, it was nothing he was doing wrong, I, I think, as a defenseman. It was more kind of our depth back there. And um, I think for him as a forward, he's actually excelled, uh, you know, continuing on from last year. Uh, we had the conversation over the summer where he would try defense again. And, uh, you know, I just, there's too many big goals he scored last year as a forward that we, that we uh, kept, re, you know, migrating back to him playing forward. And, uh, you know, that's where he, where he's having a huge success right now for him. And we, we would like him there as an organization, but more importantly, he's bought into, to being in that spot. And, you know, he, he's putting the work in and he's excelling and, uh, we appreciate him for it. So last year, obviously, Aiden Hutchinson was one of the star players on your team. Just recently, you've added a younger brother, Ashton, to the roster. What did you like about Ashton's game that made it easy to add him to your team this year? Well, I, I joke with Aiden quite a bit that Ashton's better. So it's, it's <laughs> Look uh, out. one of those things where, and, and actually, quite honestly, um, I think he is for his age, at the same age. So, uh, what I see from Ashton as a 19-year-old is, uh, you know, a good motor plays uh, very, very good with the puck. He he finishes off a lot of pucks with skill, uh, whether it's an area play or you know he finds guys. He's an excellent distributor of the puck and very smart player too. And works a little harder than Aiden does defensively too, which is nice to have uh, in our lineup, hundred percent. But he's uh, we got great history with the family. You know, Aiden scored his first goal the other last weekend and uh as a northern michigan wildcat and couldn't be happier for him uh, we posted all over social media because that's what we're all about here but uh with ashton coming in it was it's a huge pickup to play with summers and belton on that top line and he's done a great job that's great news uh, and look out for the rest of the league if he's going to be end up being better than aiden because uh boy aiden had a great season last year uh now speaking of guys coming in and out there's there's been a flurry of trades across the league Trevor early in the season, but Melford has remained mm. sort of quiet on the trade front. Now you've, I know you've added a guy here or added a guy there, but on the trade front dating back to last season, even outside of the, the massive clay sleeve, trade that went down, you guys have kind mm. of kept it quieter a little bit on the trade front. Is that a philosophy you like to adhere to, or is it simply coincidental that you just kind of like the roster and it's worked out the way that it's worked out? Well, I'm a believer if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Yeah. So I think, uh, we're we're pretty happy with what we got here um you know obviously sometimes uh hockey moves do happen but you know from we're not we're not particularly looking it's more just uh you know if there's something comes up that like that we like we would look at it but uh you know we're confident in our group we've got 
you know, I can't ask for any more in our, of our goaltending, uh, our defense. we got six veteran guys that are healthy, that are, are, are very good. And up front, we've been putting in the puck enough too. And it's been not just uh, offensively as our forward group, but I'm, you know, we're getting better every day uh, defensively too. And if we can have that nice mix of uh, 200 feet responsibility, then, uh, you know, I like our chances. Yeah, no, no question about it. And the proof is in the pudding. Got to put together a little win streak here, and that's always a good feeling. Um, just two more questions for me. Uh, first one, then, you know, is there any way that you can kind of put your finger on that this team is different than last year? You know, they win, they win, they win, and then this year you win, you win, you win. As you said, it's not that simple. Everybody has adversity, and everybody has wake-up calls. But is there any way that your team is different this year than, than what we saw from last year? I don't know. I mean, I think there was a lot of hype around uh, Sleva Hutchinson and Dugay, but uh, I think, you know, for us, we're looking to spread out the scoring probably a little more. And I think we've scored by committee, as you can tell with the, you know, top scorers in the league. We, we, we were a little absent there, but we're comfortable with that. Um, it's, uh, you know, when you look at a guy like Austin Shepard, Nolan Patterson, and that line with Caleb Binner, um, those guys are as, good uh, players in the league and they're going to contribute more offensively and they have this year uh, and they're playing in the same kind of area in the lineup as they were last year, maybe a little higher. So I think for us, like the depth of those players now as returning players is going to be huge for us. And when you add, you know, guys like Bryson Aikens and that kind of thing, you know, guys who played in Spruce Grove as a 17 year old that's here as an 18 year old, He's, um, you know, going to be looking to contribute too. So I think for us, we're pretty happy with our depth up front and the fact that we can roll four lines and anyone that's in the lineup can uh, be hard to play against and get the job done. Should be a lot of fun regardless. Uh, just to close it out, Trevor, you have a small little southern swing coming up here, Estevan and Weyburn in the next few days, and then Flynn Flon next week before the showcase uh, kind of schedule takes over. But what will be the keys uh, to the games here for the next little week and a half or so for you guys to stay on top of the standings after the three games? Well, I think our biggest thing is not to get ahead of ourselves, you know, stay in the moment. Uh, there, Sometimes when you feel you know mentally you can just show up and get through a night uh that's that can't happen you know when you when you're playing every team in this league and i i've said it here for the last few years it's because of the draft and because of what we do as a league to make things fair and equitable um every team has a chance to beat everyone everyone every night and uh you know it's no different this year we just we had a couple wake-up calls you know melville comes in here and beats us at home and uh you know and and they they deserved it it was they played harder than us they they outworked us and you know going up to Flin Flon like I just heard her said earlier those, those kind of things happen to us and we just want to learn from that and make sure it doesn't happen again and give us a chance and an opportunity every night to play our best as close to 60 minutes as possible well perfect Trevor thanks for joining us today uh, I'll let you get back to it and all the best in the coming weeks I think I'm going to be hopping in the car with Jacob Faith here and coming down to Estevan for the game on Friday so maybe I'll see you at the rink but otherwise uh, best of luck and uh, the rest of the way and we'll chat with you again soon all right thanks guys really appreciate it take care all right that was of course general manager and head coach of the Melford Mustangs the number one team in the SJHL does that uh Starting to sound like a broken record to these guys, it seems like, hey, like they're right up there again. And like I said uh, at the beginning of the interview, uh, they're the tops of almost every category right now. Special teams, you know, record, win streak, all this stuff. And uh, they just keep doing it. Just keep doing it. Hey, you know what? Uh, if a coach says, do it this way, do it my way, listen, buy in, and good things will happen, and then good things happen, yeah, that makes it a lot easier. Yeah. For the coach to say, look, we won last year. We have a lot of those same guys He's still here. If you listen and follow my way, then good things will come. And clearly they have. Clearly Aiden Hutchinson and Ryan Dugay were well prepared. Mm -hmm. They have been uh, doing a great job down at Northern Michigan. Aiden Hutchinson's quarter beauty is, as Trevor was pointing out, yeah. um, down there. So, you know, they are making hockey players. They're making them the right way in Melfort. 
Uh, and yeah, it'll be no fun to face the Mustangs all year. So for, for sure. Anytime you replace a Hutchinson with a Hutchinson, you got a good thing going Proof of on. Concept, yeah. Yep. It works. Just keep it going. Like you said, Trevor said it himself. Yep. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. Just bring in another yeah. Hutchinson. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Bring in, uh, do they have a third one? I wonder. I yeah, we'll see. <laughs> it's usually the third brother is always the best one. Well, too. Yeah. Uh, well, yeah. I mean, Aiden, Aiden did was honest. I mean, it gave me a little bit of a scouting report. Yeah. He said, uh, you know, maybe he's a little bit more defensive. Maybe he skates a little bit better. Um, I mean, but Aiden's was so 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 silky mm. with the mitts. So, but I mean, you know, Trevor's Trevor's always been about two hundred foot first. Uh, so, you know, that, that's an interesting assessment that he would share that with us. Yeah. But I loved it. I loved it. There you go. Great chat there with Trevor, as it usually is. Mm. Uh, let's move on now to uh, the look ahead. Uh, as we look ahead to the weekend, there are eleven games coming up in the next couple of days. So let's have a look at Friday here. It's a super Friday. All 12 teams are playing across six games in the league. Humboldt is up in Flin Flon. Uh, we'll see if Flin Flon can reverse their recent streak there of four straight losses. Melford, as I mentioned during the interview there, is going to be in Estevan on Friday night playing the Bruins. Notre Dame is up in Nippowin. Now, this one's special because Nippowin is retiring a jersey that night. Greg Clausen getting his jersey retired. Uh, Nippowin Hawks legend there. So that should be a good one there in Nippowin. Uh, Melville is going to be facing Weyburn in a big Viterra division rivalry there. Uh, should be a great game in Weyburn at the Crescent Point Place. Yorkton's taking on Kindersley. That should also be a good one. Those are two top teams in the league right now. And Battleford's is taking on LaRange at the Mel Hagelin Uniplex on Friday night to close it out. And then on Saturday, uh, we see five games, not six. I thought there were six. I thought it was a double super, super weekend. That was what me and Kelly, uh, our highlights cutter, we were talking about it. We thought there was 12 games, but nope, just five. Uh, Humboldt is back in Flin Flon again for another one. Uh, Estevan's taking on Melville again, so the Viterra Division's uh, matchups just switch there. Melfort then moves over to Crescent Point Place to play those Weyburn Red Wings. Yorkton is in Kindersley again. They take on each other again. And Battlefords is in LaRange again. So we've seen this a lot, I feel like, this season more than in my previous seasons in the league where it's kind of like back-to-back -back weekend matchups a lot this year. Have you noticed that? Where it's yeah. not even home and homes. It's just like two <clears> games in one spot. Yeah, teams have been teams. Yeah, teams have tried to do things a little bit uh, differently this year. Yeah. I think I think the uh, the, the schedule waiting has changed a little bit this year too, mm -hmm. in terms of how much you play certain teams and whatnot. So right. um, I think that has a lot to do with it too. But trying to people are trying to save some money like on travel and yeah, that kind of thing. Smart. So it's a big Why piece not? of it. Yeah. Uh, are there any of those games, Nugsy, that I just listed off that you're like, holy cow? Yeah, I mean, we, you know, we talked to that, that sort of proof of concept uh, that Melfort has, and, and, you know, it's kind of the 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 challengers in the Weyburn Red Wings against the, the you know, the, 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 the champs, the ones on the throne already in the mm -hmm. Melfort Mustangs, and so it's kind of American Gladiators. Right. I don't know if you ever watched oh, yeah. those from back in the day, or you had the challenger who was also Jack, but then there was the steroid, yeah. you know, junkie guy. Have not, you seen not that the there's any Netflix enough, documentary on? I have not. Oh, but, you gotta watch uh, it. But next, that's next road know, trip for you. And, and in in Weyburn, the Mustangs, you know, actually have been just a, a tinge not as good as they have been on the road or the Red Wings. Pardon me. Yeah. So it'll be interesting to see how Weyburn plays. Uh, you know, coming off of that loss in Humboldt, um, you know. Weyburn and Melfort, they have a little bit of uh, beef as well. Last year, there was a bunch of kind of punch-ups uh, between Weyburn and Melfort, too. They're two emotional teams uh, as well, which is which is good. Uh, but it also means that there could be some rough stuff. So definitely that one is the one that circled for me. How about you? Yeah, that's that's a great one. I'm going to go up with the Whitney because I really want to see what Flin, yeah. how Flin Flon's going to battle back here. I, I just... Again, I said once they start rolling, I feel like they're going to start rolling, mm -hmm. and they just uh, that one domino is going to fall. And a back to back against Humboldt at the Whitney uh, could potentially be that domino, or it could go the opposite way. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to keep an eye on the Whitney this weekend. That's, yeah, that that's what I'm looking Rory at. Rory loves it up there. So, yep, exactly. Should be, should be a good time. Uh, if you want to follow along with everything going on across the league, make sure you hit up all of our social media channels uh, that's Facebook, X, Instagram, TikTok or right here on YouTube if you're watching on YouTube or our podcast network. So make sure you're following, and please hit subscribe. We are inching closer uh, to 1,500 subscribers on YouTube. And every time you go over there and watch a video, if you haven't subscribed, please just hit the subscribe button if you're watching on YouTube because uh, we get a lot of our views from unsubscribed viewers. So just click the subscribe button. It helps us out a lot. You'd be surprised. Even And it's so easy to do. Yeah. Uh, or uh, make sure you check out, if you can't make it to the rink most nights and you still want to watch the games, Make sure you get your Flow Hockey subscription. 
Uh, so you can watch all the games there. Uh, otherwise, uh, thank you once again to all of our sponsors. And of course, that starts with Cantera Seeds, Borgo, Capital Auto Mall, who again, if you mention the SJHL when you're trading in a vehicle at Capital Auto Mall, you get a thousand bucks extra. Do it. Uh, SGU, SAS Lotteries, UPL, the sponsor of all of our broadcasts, Chevrolet, the official vehicle sponsor of the SJHL, and uh, all of our highlights. Great Western, Nutrien, RBC, and Saskatchewan Construction Safety Association, our coaches interview sponsor. Uh, speaking of Great Western really quick, I had a great chat with uh, Chris Hubbard, who's a Regina rep for Great Western slash Original 16. Uh, just the other day, we were here at IKS Media for an event, and he was there as well, uh, and had a great chat. Great people over at uh, Great Western and Original 16. Um, mm -hmm. And if you know the origin stories of the company, there's no doubt why they have good people working for them. It's a great company. Uh, just wanted to give them a little shout yeah. out. If there was only one criticism I would give of uh, Great Western, make a gluten-free beer, please. Well, Chris, are you listening? I'll text them after this. Thanks. Um, get on it. Uh, but yes, thank you to our sponsors. Make sure you follow our social media channels. Keep it locked on sjhl.ca. There's going to be a lot of information coming out in the next couple of weeks with the showcase coming up, with the whole Yorkton Terrier situation settling down. If there's any news there at all, we'll keep you up to date. There has been a flurry of trades, despite Melfort not making any, as I mentioned to Trevor. There has been a lot of stuff going on, so keep an eye on that. Uh, what else is coming up on sjhl.ca? Uh, well, so also make sure you check out Sask Finest Sask from Finest. yesterday. Uh, John Anderson from the Yorkton Terriers uh, was my subject. Uh, and yeah, thank you for reading all those. If uh, yeah. anybody has been out there, been some nice comments every Wednesday at noon, I, I put something out. So make yeah. sure you stay tuned. Make sure you stay tuned. Um, it's a game day tomorrow. It's a game day Saturday. So uh, make sure you get out to the rinks, uh, support your teams, buy tickets, buy beverages, buy some merchandise, uh, get that support for your teams going. If you can't, make sure again to check out Flow Hockey. But we will be back on SJHL Weekly on Monday to recap all of it for you. So until then, enjoy the hockey, everybody. Thank <laughs> you.